What's going on, man? We got a special guest uh, on the Coach's Corner today, man. One of my old teammates, one of my guys, man, doing it big now in college. Uh, we got Coach Geddes on, man. So, man, I'm glad that you that you're on. You joined us to be able to share some thoughts, man. Just you know, share some knowledge with our guys. So, tell us about yourself. Tell us who you are, where you're from. Any crazy stories? Some which I already know about that we don't need to share. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, but man, tell tell everybody who you are, what you do, man, all that good stuff. Right. So uh, David Geddes, uh, originally from Los Angeles, California, um, went to Baylor University. So played against you in college. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Then ended up playing with you in Carolina for a couple of years. And uh, and then right from there, transitioned to kind of coaching. And uh, right now I'm the uh, offensive quality control coach at uh, Syracuse University. Man, so so explain that. So exactly what uh, does a quality control coach do? You know, how do you uh, you help with the game plan and just just your role on the uh, coaching staff so far? Right. So the quality control position, it, it varies from team to team. Right. So from for our team and, and from what my expertise is, I'm the assistant like receivers coach, essentially. So uh, the duties throughout the week consist of like just game plan stuff, watching film, breaking down the film. Um compromise you know uh coming up with the uh the, the playbooks and the plays and then just helping out daily stuff with practice and things of that nature um but yeah just realistically just being an assistant to the receiver coach and then right. obviously using my expertise at the receiver position man i love it so look let's get into it i know you're a busy man so let's get into it let's get these questions answered the reason that i got you on is because yep. i get a thousand questions from my parents a thousand questions from my kids that are getting recruited so I'm like, all right, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get the people who are on here that are recruiting y'all to answer these questions that you got. You know what I'm okay. saying? Now yeah, yeah, you know good. what it is. You know what to do, all that type of stuff. So the first question is this. What is the biggest misconception in recruiting? All right, so I got my kids coming to me. Hey, man, should I go uh, to this camp? Hey, what about this recruiting service is telling me to buy uh, uh, this plan for, for $89.99 a month? What is the biggest misconception? What do I need to know as a parent or, and as an athlete? Uh, well, the first thing probably would be that recruiting services are absolutely um, useless. <laughs> we don't, I, I, and I can only speak from my perspective, but, uh, you know, being on a staff at Baylor University and being on a staff here and at being at, even at the D2 level um, for a short time, like you don't use our recruiting services. Mm. Like, like wow. The process of recruiting is really comes down to us as coaches going on the road, seeing the, the, the high school coaches, seeing the kids in person, seeing the kids in camps, mm -hmm. uh, seeing the film on huddle, seeing the film that way. And, and then from there, evaluating it yourself. Like we're not depending on some third person, third party source Ooh. to tell us who to recruit and things of that nature. Um, right. As far as services are go, you know, sometimes you have word of mouth, like a coach that played against this kid might recommend someone to look at that's a third party mm -hmm. source you can say, but as far as like a source where you're paying money to to get mm -hmm. a kid recruited, that's Ooh. it's it's a scam. In, well, in you my, break you breaking hearts right now, man. You breaking yeah, people's hearts right now. But shoot, that's that's what they need to know. You know what I mean? Now, as far as all right, so look, so we got the recruiting services. You got that question answered. Now, what about football camps, right? So that's another question I get. You got. You got uh, Nike, you got Rivals, you got all these different camps. Then you have the college camps, right? Mm -hmm. What should they be going to? What is most important? What helps them uh, uh, get evaluated, get seen, get the exposure that they're looking for? What's the number one thing you would tell them? Okay. Well, when it comes to camps, I think camps are a great source to validate what you already – or validate what you kind of saw already, but you wanted to see, like, in person. So what I mean right. by that is – uh, in the process of recruiting, we're going to go out on the road. We have, we have you know, a list of schools and a, a list of players on each team that we – prospective athletes that we're looking at, right? From that point, you're going to kind of – all right, here, let me watch this guy's film. Let me see his highlights. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to see how he moves. I want to see if he can do anything like this. All right, at that point, yeah. Um, wait, 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 wait. Hold up. What just happened? Oh, we're good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. All right. Yeah, at that I, point, I, I'll cut all that out now. Don't worry about it. I'll cut okay. It out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the, at whatever point, that's when you kind of use those camps as like, all right, cool. Let me see what he will do at this camp. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I thought that he he was this explosive. 
this camp is validating that. Okay. Um, right. So as, as far as like the, the, the important camps to kind of go to, as far as the recruiting, uh, recruiting um, process, I would say that the earlier in the process, the more important camps to go to are the college camps to where mm. you're competing against other kids and those coaches okay. are able to kind of put your, that's going to put you on the coach's radar. And then gotcha. like all the other ones are like more so for validation. Like, let me see like, exactly. Is this kid exactly what I thought he was when I saw him at this place or when I saw him on film or things of that nature. So would you say like, uh, I, I know like I, what's the popular, like Nike has the opening. Um, you got the elite 11. Does that, does that play any role in the recruiting process for you guys? If a kid's an elite 11, I, I, yeah, you could definitely say it is because I don't okay. really, honestly, yeah, I, I would, I would definitely say that's that's something that you can add, and it, is, it will be a beneficial thing to have uh, going forward in your evaluation process for sure, especially if you perform well, because that's right. a accredited uh, a camp that has produced some 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 guys that have uh, performed well at the college, collegiate level and even at the the the, the NFL level now. So right. that's definitely something that you can can use. And that mm. we'll look at in evaluation. All right. So you just said something, man, that made me that made me think of another question. All right. So now we're talking about the camps. You have like the super mega camps that people are doing now. You yeah. have the individual on campus uh, camps. All right. So the first mm. question would be how how valuable are the super camps versus being on Syracuse's campus? That's the first one. The second one is can the camps hurt you? So you're recruiting a guy, or you have some interest of this of this player. And let's say they get out and they have one of the worst days they've ever had. Can yeah. that be a, a detriment in their recruiting process? It absolutely can. And I've seen, <laughs> okay. it, I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand. Okay. We had a kid rated very high on our board. We thought that he was a stud. Um, and we watched a, a UC report. So they had like the UC. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So we mm -hmm. watched his UC report and it looked like he was just going through the motions. He didn't look explosive. He didn't look fast. Mm. It didn't look like he was trying. And he we instantly stopped recruiting the kid. Wow. Like, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It, that's just the reality of the situation. It's like every yep. time you step, every time you step uh on a football field and there's cameras rolling, that's a job interview. Love it. You know, so yep. you gotta take you gotta treat it as such. Like I don't, you know, and these kids don't necessarily understand that sometimes. But it's, this is a, a big business. This is a big money business for everyone involved now, especially yep. with NIL and things like that nature. But for yep. everyone involved, there's a lot of money going into the process. And we have to make sure that we're, we're evaluating and bringing on the right guys, because if we don't, that's mm -hmm. our job on the line. Right. Yep. So you want to make sure that you get the guys that are competitive and that have the right state of mind to go out there and get the job done. And if you are going through the motions one day and you just had a really bad day. It sucks. It happens. But at the same <laughs> right. time, I, you got to understand it's it's you versus thousands of other kids. And now right. at the high school level, I mean, if I can go get a kid in the portal who I know can produce. I hey. might take him over a high school right now. So, well, you speak of facts, man. You speak yeah. of facts. Yeah. Yep. So what about what about the super camps? You got the mega camp. So every single year, I know SMU. This is a big one that the kids always talk about. SMU puts on like a camp, be eighty schools out there. Right? Is, is that is, I've, is I've that actually worked that one before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so is that important for the kids to go to, or Absolutely. is it better if, if they're if they're on campus? Which one is it? They're both they're both really well. They're, okay. I think gotcha. they're, they're both they're both beneficial uh, in recruiting and evaluation. The only thing you have to be careful of, right, is the mega camps, they attract a lot of guys because they attract a lot of coaches, right? Mm -hmm. So your opportunity to get reps, like yeah. you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to grind to get some reps. <laughs> and then you got to make right. every rep count. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's just like you got to really be careful of that. But at the same time, like you're going to have a lot of coaches, a lot of eyes on you. And that's a great opportunity. I mean, I've at the D2 level, uh, we lived on that, like going to the camps and seeing them and like, okay, wow, great. You know, and then, it's, you know, at the D2 level, you're, you're kind of getting some of the leftovers because all the other D1 programs are, are taking the right. best guys. But yep. there's still a lot of guys that you're able to, to kind of get. And then all of a sudden, that, now you're getting recruits and now they're coming on campus. And now next thing you know, they're signing with you. So 
Yeah, those camps are awesome. Uh, and then obviously, the if you can go to an individual school's camp and if the, they're the only one throwing it, um, that's even better because you're gonna have that yeah. entire school's pro uh, uh, staff working that camp. Uh, that means that's just more eyes on you, right? Mm-hmm. So now you yeah. have more opportunities to impress. And all you gotta do is really impress one coach. You gotta get one coach to vouch for you okay. and to say like, hey, I think this kid's got it. And then at that point, guess what we're gonna do? We're all gonna come in here as a staff room. Right now we're in the staff room. We're gonna come in here in the staff room and we're gonna turn on your film. But then uh, you don't understand the importance of that. You you're we you instantly just put yourself on the radar. So now we're watching your film and now you have multiple people seeing your film and saying, okay, well, I like this kid. All right, let's look more about him. Now let's look at his Nike stuff. Now let's look at the other camps. Okay. okay. Now we're validating what we want to see. You know what I'm saying? And then now you go that's forward good. in the situation. So that's how it kind of works. Dude, that's golden information, man. Yeah, I think you're the first one that's ever broken it down like that to where it's plain and it's simple. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That that's gold, man. That's gold for the kids and for the parents. All right. So look, we're talking about the camps and now we're talking about the evaluation process. So let's transition to this. Hey, I like something that you said that this is a big business now. All right. I think these kids need to understand that it's more, it's always been a business, but now with the NIL, with coaches having maybe maybe two, three years tops to get this thing right, depending on where you are, they got to understand they got to come in ready to play. So, all right, you work with the with the receivers. Everybody knows, man, your pedigree, Baylor, you uh, played in the league at the receiver position. We went one on ones many a time, right? When you're mm-hmm. looking at the when you're looking at the receiver position, right? So okay. let's start with that. Then let's start with the overall body. What okay. are you looking for in a player? And everybody, you know, big, fast, strong, and all that. But let's break it down to the specifics. Like this is what's going to make me recruit you. What would you tell those guys? Right. Well, from the receiver, you say you start off with the receiver position. Yeah. You yeah, got yeah. three criteria, right? You got to have one. Okay. Of the three. You got to have two of the three in order to get recruited. Okay. Uh, size. Okay. Speed. Our speed slash quickness, right? And then uh, uh, technique, right? If the guy's okay. a technician, right? You got to have two or three to get recruited. If you're a, t- a route technician and you're really quick and it's fast, but you're not really necessarily tall or you don't have good size, you're still going to get recruited because you're, you can run, you can separate in your routes. You, you're catching the ball and you're fast. You're going to get recruited. If you have really good size, but you're not quick, you're not fast, but you also have good technique, you're going to get recruited. Right. Right. The guys that had yep. all three, those are the five-star recruits. Those are the guys that are going to, you know, wherever they want to go to They're Right. You know, right. They have no issues. They can pick wherever they want to go to. But in order to get recruited, for the most part, at the D1 level, you get, you really want to get a guy, a guy that has two of the three. Okay. Right? For sure. And then it, it, for, for most positions, it, it, goes, it goes kind of like by those requirements. Uh, okay. But you got to have a, at least two of those three things. Uh, Man, as far okay. as, like, the attributes on the – as far as the attributes right. on the football field. And then, yeah. obviously – uh, off the field stuff, you got to have grades and and we so, so kind of stuff. Too. Let me ask you this then, because because that was going to be my next question. So we talk about off the field. We know we know grades every, that's drilled into the head, right? Yeah. When I say winner, okay. Uh, when I say you need to be a winner, um, what does that look like in the recruiting process from the coaches' standpoint? Is that winning on the football field? Is that how you act uh, when it comes to us talking to your coach, your principal, whoever? Well, what does that truly mean for the for the player? Yeah, well, I know our head coach is very, very much into the person and not just okay. the football player, right? So he wants high-value individuals. Uh, with that being said, he wants you to go into the schools, and he tells us as coaches, when you're recruiting, you're out recruiting, he wants us to talk to teachers, talk to custodians, talk to janitors, talk to – Talk to even uh, other other teachers that you maybe weren't even in their class. Like, what do you think about okay. this kid? You know, and what kind of person is he? And at the same time, yes, when you're talking about a winner, yeah, you got to be able to find a way because that's all school is, is just finding a way mm-hmm. to, to succeed, right? You don't necessarily, you know, we, we've all been there. We all graduated college. Graduating mm-hmm. school is you're not necessarily learning stuff all the time. It's all about right. figuring out a way to pass your courses. What whatever way that is, you got to figure out a way to get through it. Whatever way you got to learn that short term or long term, whatever way you want to put it, you got to figure out a way to execute and get a, a good grade to pass that class. Right. So that just shows you that your ability to okay, well, how is he going to transition that to the football field? Well, 
you're going to find a way to win. If I put you in the situation that tell you that this is what I want you to do and you get on the football field and something else happens, are you going to be able to make an adjustment and still succeed in your, in your objective? That's a, it's all relatable and it all, it all comes back on one another. Right? So if you're, if you're someone that's, you know, successful in the classroom, that can definitely transition to someone who's successful on the football field because you have the mental capacity to get it done on both realms. Boy, but, look, boy, look at you, man. You're making me proud, Janice, man. You're dropping nuggets. Boy, look at that. Look, whatever, that, that's good. That's good, man, as far as because, you know, you, you hear that concept a lot, and, and I like it for what it is, but get deeper into it. Tell them, yeah, I, yeah, man, yeah, this, it's, this, like, this is like, this is what we, dog, we're looking for this. Yeah. Just don't tell me to be a winner. And what it, you yeah. said was perfect, it, it all comes you back to saying? football. It really it, right. I, it, it, Thank you. Yes. You know, yes. Like, <laughs> I, you know I don't want to, I don't want to, I hope I'm not painting the wrong picture, but you know, it all comes back to football. Like education is awesome. It's great. But yes. really, really yes. speaking, we're talking about the capacity for you to learn. If you have the capacity to learn in that realm, then that means you can come into a, 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 a situation like a football team. And if I put up, you know, 20 plays on the, on the board, you're going to be able to learn those 20 right. plays, understand what's going right. on and what your responsibility is. That's why it's important to see how you process that. Well, now I know you can process it here. You know well, what, what you just said was authentic, man. See, that's what I think, because that was going to go into my next question with the parents is what do the parents need to know in recruiting? But I think what you just said, you gave the real answer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we're not teaching classes. All right, or are you in that case as the as the coach is not teaching classes? We have a job to do, we got a business to run. Right. You know what I mean? And I think the more that they can understand that, the more that they can understand your world, the world that you guys operate in, it'll help them, it'll help them be able to handle the the, the uh adverse situations their kids will be in, right? So and so if you're talking to a parent and you're telling the parent, okay, listen, like I understand your kid is that 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 dude, all right? He's four or five star rated guy, all right, or you got a kid who's one star, whatever. What are you telling those parents? Like, look, man, this is what the process is. I need you guys to understand this one thing. What would you tell them what that uh, that that process is or, or that one thing is? Um, the one thing that they would probably need to hear. Uh, I think having a general under not. I think having a general understanding of what each individual kid is going to go through the minute he sets foot on a campus mm. is good. probably okay. the biggest thing that can help parents because parents, a lot of these parents don't know, like for me and you, I just had a kid, you have kids. So when right. our kids are in the process of getting recruited to play, you know, if they play sports and they're getting in the process of getting recruited, we'll have access to the knowledge that we, we know what the process is and we understand yep. uh, what's, what's going on behind the scenes. And we also understand what's, what's going to be expected of them and how to prepare them for that, right? Well, parents are not necessarily going to understand that and they don't know that, right? So you got to tell them like, okay, basically this is how it's going to go down. Your kid's going to come here. He's going to be by himself. He's going to have to make his right decisions on, on what he eats. He's going to have to make the right decisions right. on what he right. does. He's not going to have someone holding his hand, you know, at every stage telling him to go to class which sometimes obviously if it becomes a problem then yes you will have to right him. this is good man this is good but, keep going yeah, yeah it's all these things like the day-to-day -day stuff that you you take for granted like you think people know and they just don't so you got to tell them like yo this is what the process uh, the process is of being a collegiate athlete and then from there uh you talk about what you're going to do as a football player and what's needed you know some high school every high school is not the same right my high school, I, I didn't, it wasn't a big high school. It was an inner city school. Um, mm -hmm. We had a lot of guys who were just really athletic, but we didn't necessarily understand football like that. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I can speak for myself and say I didn't. Um, you're going you're gonna to learn the game of football. You're talking about class. You're talking about this is a school. This is a class. We're talking, we're teaching football. Right. So you got to understand that process. And with that, it comes time. You're going to put, so, you have to put so much time into this. And it's not going to just be, uh, okay, I'm gonna go to practice. I'm gonna go to weights, and then I'm gonna go play Fortnite in my dorm and go play <laughs> Call of Duty and hang yeah. out, and then yeah. go and rinse, repeat, do it tomorrow. No, this is this is this is your job now, and I think that's what the, the probably the biggest thing is is understanding that in order to be above average, I'm gonna say above average. I don't want to ever settle for average. To be mm -hmm. above average, this has to be a job. It has yep. to be. And if you, yep. you just go in here doing the bare minimum, 
you're not going to separate yourself from the thousand other players who are doing the exact same thing you're doing. Everyone's doing weights right now. Everyone's doing conditioning. Everyone's going to be doing all this stuff, right? But at the end of the day, there's only like a 1% of the individuals who are going to make it to each level, right? And that number mm-hmm. gets smaller and smaller. And, yeah. you know, we were blessed to be able to have careers in the NFL. There are a lot of players that are not going to be able to, to have that, right? And they have to understand in order to get that, like we, there's something in our heads that clicked and like, all right, cool. I got to do this. I got to do extra. I got to do extra. I can't let this guy do more than me. I got to do more than yeah. him. Yeah. And yeah. if you got to tell these, you got to tell the kids up front and you got to tell the parents, if you have dreams and aspirations of achieving these goals, these are the steps that you have to take. And if you're not willing to take these steps, there's nothing I can do for you. Damn, that was good, man. God, dog, you making me want to send my son to you, big dog. <laughs> oh, that was good, bro. All right, so look, uh, a couple more questions, and I get up out of here. All right, Damn. um, let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about NIL. Let's talk about the transfer portal, okay? okay? As a parent, man, my son is not getting recruited, or I've even had kids tell me this. I had a couple guys who were getting recruited. I won't name the schools. Uh, okay. They end up taking away their scholarship because they want to pull this kid out of the transfer portal, okay? What – what's going on with the transfer portal? What do the parents need to know from a high school perspective? Now we're talking high school kids. We're not talking about the college guys that are currently in there. Right. What do they need to know? How do they need to navigate this thing, man? What do they need to do uh, when they hear that word transfer portal? The transfer portal. Okay. Uh, um, it's, it's a, it's a tricky situation with the transfer portal because like, a lot of coaches, I'm not just speaking for myself, I'm just and I'm I'm speaking in general in, in a general sense. Uh the transfer portal is sometimes easier in recruiting kids, maybe more so than high school, because of the fact that there are a lot of kids that they look like they enjoy the process of being recruited. What do I mean by that? There are kids that and we all know it. We see, we all see the we all see the Twitter stuff. We all see it. Like right, you're 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 happy. You want to go to this school and you, you want to take a picture in this team's pro uh, in uniform. You want to take a team a picture in this team's uniform. You're on this guy's campus. You're on this guy's campus. But you're not necessarily giving any coach like the sense of that you're serious about the going forward in the process, right? Ooh. With that being said, when it comes to that portal, the kids are serious. Like they know at the end of the day, they were already on a campus and they saw what the process was and they said, you know, no, this is probably not in my best interest. And they're more so they're it's a business like, all right, cool. I need to get somewhere where I can get get it done. And the process goes a lot quicker because they understand like the seriousness of the the situation. And they're like, all right, cool. I got to get to another school and I got to get there now. And there is is that approach that kind of makes it a little easier sometimes. And the fact that you've seen them, if, if, you know, if they're fortunate enough to have at least some, some game film, if you've seen their game film and you're like, okay, this kid can compete at the collegiate level. I've seen it compared mm-hmm. to a kid that I'm not necessarily sure about yet. And right. I don't even know if I'm going to get this kid. Yeah, I'm going to take right. that kid. No. Right. So you're that's you're, project, like, you're projecting that they could. Right. It, it does happen sometimes. Um and I think from the uh, high school approach and perspective, uh, it really just comes down to um, making sure like throughout the whole process that you're showing that you, you're understanding that you are competing, not just against high school kids, but you are competing against the portal, right? right. And you have to show each program like, hey, man, like, I'm going to come in and I'm, I'm going to work and you're going to have me for four years, for four or five years. You know, right. and that's what you're going to get from me. And you got to show that you're competing against those other people and you understand that and you're willing to go and do the work. But yeah, man, I mean, that's, yeah. that's good, man. That's good, Gaddis. <laughs> I'm good. I'm loving that. All right. So what about the NIL portion, man? So I know you get that question too. Now, I, I mainly get this from a lot of my highly recruited guys. You know, I tell them, don't worry about that stuff. That, that stuff, it don't matter. You know what yeah. I mean? What, what would you tell those guys? And remember, we're talking to a specific set of kids because only maybe one is going to get maybe one. Is yeah, get, it's, so, so it's, it's, it's not, it's not fair. Everybody doesn't get it. You know what I'm saying? So right. with that being said, like, in my honest opinion, if you come on to 
in the evaluation process, and one of the first questions you're asking is about the NIL. Yeah. I don't really take I don't take you too seriously because like you're you're you know like you're 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 not, you're already kind of putting all your 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 effort and your energy into something that isn't really that important. And I what I mean by that is if you understand business, right? You yeah. understand this. If you have a product that's of quality, it doesn't matter where it is, people are going to want it and people are yes. going to pay top dollar for it. Yes. Now how do I translate that to football? If you're a guy and you go in there and you're, and you're and all your energy goes towards you being the best football player that you can possibly be, and then you transitioning that from, from you know working out to conditioning to the football field, and now you're playing and you're making plays on Saturdays. Guess what? All those opportunities are going to come straight to you. You don't have to look out for them; they're going to come to you. That's how it works, right? right. You don't go out yep. there looking for that stuff; it comes to you. So. The, the the kind of approach to like so and some of the parents are even asking these questions like you know yes. like what what do you guys offer in this like you know like and your kid hasn't even played a snap in the, in the <laughs> right. right what has he done what, where's his value yeah right mm -hmm. so you I mean you're honest you're very honest about you know like okay well this player has gotten this and this player has gotten this in the past and if, if you do these things then yeah that right. these opportunities will present themselves to you but uh. I think the approach should be focus on being the best player you can be, pro focus on getting on the field first and foremost, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And playing and producing, and then let all that other stuff happen naturally. Man, ooh, I thought you dropping nuggets, man. Hell, yeah. my parents don't eat this up. Something wrong with them because you you giving them the game, you giving mm -hmm. it to them. There should be no questions that that they have after this. All right, so look, man, let's end it with this. I want to give every every coach that I have on the coaches board. I'm going to give them the opportunity to tell people why. Uh, their school is, is the place to be, all right? So, look, man, you got the opportunity now. Why Syracuse, man? What is it about Syracuse uh, that that people should be a part of? We see what you guys have been doing. You, you're building something special. You, you, you're pushing yeah. people to the brink. You know what I mean? So why is Syracuse? Why is Syracuse, uh, Syracuse special? Man, a program that is is all about developing talent, Um we haven't had this, you know, the, 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 the fortune of having like five-star recruits. Right. But what we're doing is we're, we're getting guys that, you know, the Matthew Bergeron's of the world guy from Canada, no one knew about. And now he's a third, he's a third round draft pick for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, guys that are, are, are overlooked sometimes and guys that are, are people don't think that they're necessarily the greatest at their position. Those guys are coming up here. We're developing them and we're turning them into NFL prospects. And it's going to continue to grow because we're bringing in the right guys. We have the right coaches on the staff to get the job done and competing against the best. That's another thing that helps in the whole process is not just the fact that you're having success in the college level, you're having a success at the college level against other guys that are going to be, you know, being looked at, you know, at and evaluated at the top of their position as far as the NFL and things of that nature. Uh, when it comes to college, that's what it's all about. If, you you want to recruit every single player you recruit, you want them to say they want to play in the NFL because that means that they want to be the best at what they're doing, right? And only only the best at what they do make it to the NFL, right? So at the end of the day, it's all about getting guys that want to – if you're not the best, if you're not a five-star recruit, that's okay because not all five-star recruits make it. There's a lot right. of five-star recruits right now. Yep. There's a lot of guys that are – you look at their five – they're, they're recruiting, they're like a 99, whatever, whatever, and they never make it to the NFL. They never play in college. Why right. is that? Because they don't necessarily understand that you still got to get better. You still got to develop. So some of those guys, they don't, they don't get hungry. They don't, they're not hungry, and they lose out on that opportunity to grow from where they are. Where some guys are on the bottom level, maybe you're a one star, maybe you're a two star, maybe you're not even, maybe you're not even ranked, but you go into it understanding like, okay, I still have a chance to make it. I still have an opportunity yep. to make it. Yep. All right. You don't have to be a four, 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 three guy to, to play in the NFL. There's other, there's other ways to do it. That's the thing we want to do. And I, I, I find joy in, in, in helping kids in that process and, and developing, I mean, and hopefully getting a chance to, to live out their dreams and, and be the best football player they can be. Well, man, I love it, man. I love it. I love all the gems that you dropped today, man. If anybody's listening to this, you know, parents, kids and all that, and, and they don't understand what the process is, 
then something's wrong with them. Like you broke yeah. it down. I, you broke I'm it down honest, to a it, You know, it's not a yes. secret. And hopefully everyone learns something from it and, and then yep. uh, go from there. Yeah, but I love it, man. I appreciate the time. I know you got to get to your meetings and whatnot. But this is Coach Geddes uh, of Syracuse Football, man. I appreciate you having on. And look, man, next time I text you, next time I text you, bro, respond back to the text. Why you got to wait two months to respond back, though? Oh, uh, we're not going to do this right now. This is, you know, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we want to take this off the record, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's all good, man. But no, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate yeah, everything no problem, that, you, that you said. And, and um, this is going to be good, man, because the gems you dropped for real are going to help these kids. So appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you for taking the time. Absolutely. No problem, man. All right. All right.